So let's go ahead and get your poly tab square. I'm using paper because I don't want to, I'm doing kind of a, some of it's already finished for you guys so you can see the, the process. But basically, um, we're going to start out with an egg shape. And the most important thing for this part is making sure that we scale our portrait. Hey, Jeff. So, yeah. Super fast. Um, there are two sides to the poly tab. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, thank you. It's been primed, but everybody should do it on the mat side yeah there's like a wrinkly shiny side and there's a matte side make sure you're working on the matte side thank you i almost did it on the wrong side and that's it's what on my list of eight. things to say that's up there that i didn't look at yeah um yeah i mean it's not the end of the world if you did it on the other side but yeah it's kind of nice to do it on the right side so those of you that are drawing um not boss um you want to scale your <laughs> you want to scale your portrait so that you have room for your hair. And um, uh, if you have weird uh, features that you wanna make sure you accentuate, like uh, Jeff's cool hair that he has going on, you wanna make sure you leave room for that. Um, big ears, whatever else. I'm not so you wanna start with a, a egg shape, but leaving room for those features, but you wanna make sure you make it big enough that it's not tiny. And that's something I always tell the kids, they always make them too small. So just find that egg shape. You're gonna start out with upside down egg, on your poly tab. Simple. Is it okay to erase on this paper? It's not very forgiving, but you have to remember too, you're gonna to be painting over it. So yes, more okay. than erasing, you can do like lighter lines first. I always yeah. tell my kids, um, draw light until you get it right. So okay. yeah, you can cover those lines up later. So um, those of you that's been had a, a, an academic college career in, in the arts or drawing academically, they're gonna, there's all these measurements and things you can do to make sure the eyes are on the right, in the right place and the nose and the mouth and all that. Uh, I, that's a, a little bit too dry for me. So I, I do a couple measurement lines, but basically we we'll make sure that generally things are in the right place um, and in, in the right proportion. So this drawing that I just put down is, is kind of a generic uh, way of measuring where those things go. So um, you can see, I don't know if you, is, is this, these words visible to you guys? Can you see them okay? Yeah, raise it up a little bit. So you can see all these measurements that we're gonna put these things where they go light line in about the middle of the head, both horizontally and vertically. Really, really light because we don't want to make, this is not going to be seen in the final drawing. While you're doing that, I'm going to check that out real quick. If you guys want to sh hold up your heads when uh, when you've got them drawn, we'd love to see them. Is that what I need, right? Make it so you mean, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm walking around the room. I'm kind of a mobile kind of person. I'm looking at I'm looking at your head shapes. I just got a glimpse of Anna Daly's. Looks good. Look, she started with some stuff a little early too. Looks good. All right, let me get back to my spot, spot here. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And it really is important to get that head shape uh, where you want it before you move it any further. So it's going to be the basis for all your other parts of your head. So essentially, we have our, our structural measurements. Now what we're going to do, one more, one more set of lines. Very lightly, in the middle, we've divided the head into side right and side left. 
draw a light, light, very light line going down the middle of each side, not all the way to the top and bottom, but just another structural line. And I won't get too scientific here. Just gonna get a couple measurements. So it should look like that. Get this one out of there. And again, this is really light. Just get it's a little bit of structure in there. I promise it's not gonna be this dry the whole time. I have a, I feel like I saw a question come in. Yeah. Oh. She said uh, that she joined late and she was wondering what side to draw on. So I'm gonna answer you in the chat box, Lynn. Thank you. I couldn't do this without Maria running things. Thank you, Maria, for keeping us going, keeping me on track too. All right. Okay, so now we have everything we need to begin. That middle line, let's go back to that middle line right there. That's where we're gonna start our drawing. And we're gonna draw our eyes to begin with. I always like to try to start um, with the eyes. Again, these shapes we're drawing are not your eyes, if that makes sense. It's just a simple eye shape to get a start. We're gonna go back in later with another, uh, go back in later with another layer of making it yours. Okay, so just for the purposes of this measurement and these, uh, this part of this, the workshop, you're gonna draw your eyes in the middle of that horizontal line going across and in the middle of that vertical line going up on that side of your face. So try to center that eye shape. And again, it's just a football shape. If you can draw a football, you can draw an eye. So if you saw me move, do that on this too. Right there. So again, a football shape. And just go up like that and then come up like that. Super simple. And I'll show you how we're gonna make it more like an eye later. This is just structural stuff. We'll get to the fun stuff here soon. And very simply, but for right now, we're just gonna draw a couple circles in there. And again, super light. This is all structural stuff at this point. Okay. Philip, that looks great again. Gabby uh, and Mr. Wilson, we would love to see yours. Seen a lot of come up. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move on. We have that middle of the eyes, that line, that horizontal line. If you can see me right here taking my marker across the, my drawing, that went right through the middle of the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is come down from this line here to the chin. And our nose is gonna be, the bottom of the nose, it's gonna be right about in the middle of that. That's, so that's just a line to indicate the bottom of the nose, right in the middle of that space. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly in the middle of that space. We're just gonna draw a quick marking line for, for that uh, measurement. Somebody might ask how long that line is from here to here. If you actually want to draw a line down, it actually ends at the eyes, but that's not important for right now. I'm not too worried about all that. And Lynn, we did see you hold yours up. It looked great. You're doing a great job, Rockstar. We have a lot of shy callers on this video. We would love to see some of your art if any of you feel so inclined to even just unmute. Laura, that looks great. Paula, doing fantastic. 
fantastic. Uh, we really want to celebrate in your art with you. So if you feel so inclined to show us what you got, we would love to see it. All of the folks in the Pell family, that's looking very lovely. I'm sorry? The Pell. Oh, the Pell. Oh, there they are. I'm coming. Can you guys hold that a little bit closer to the camera, the Pells? Those is good. Pell, it's a little hard to see it, but so far what I see is looking good. Is that your, um, go back, can you see it one more time, Pell? Yeah, those, those are your eyes. Um, you can't answer yes, I'm sorry. If those are your eyes, move them a little further apart, but you're good to go otherwise, okay? Okay. So we have, we have our face shape, we have some eyes. Again, we're not gonna draw the details of the mouth right now, but those lines that I drew down here, we're gonna go from that line to that line, just draw a line, simple. Just draw a line for right now. And if yours doesn't look just like mine, that's okay. We just want to get things generally in, in the right spot and the right size. And then we're going to worry about shape here in a moment too. Um, the ears, if you, in your portrait, if you are able to see your ears, we'll go ahead and draw those now. If you're not going to see your ears in the end anyways, there's no point to do that. This step, you can just skip it and hang out for a second. But if you are doing your ears, they are from the top of the eye to the bottom of the nose. Top of the eye, bottom of the nose. And the best way to draw an ear, again, we'll do details later, is just to draw a half of a heart. Same thing on the other side. Half of a heart. I know it looks kind of like a robot right now, but we'll get there, I promise. So try to get your drawing close to where mine is in terms of structural lines. We're going to start drawing shapes. Drew Ross, you're a little too far away for us to see you. Oh, there we go. Those are some nice eyes. I like your heart ears. Great, great. What else are we working with? I'm All right, Phillips. Very right. cool. Yeah, Lynn. Hold on, just one second, Lynn. I'm gonna make you bigger for justice. I can see it on this one. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, that's fine. I can see it just fine on this one. Um, yeah, that's good. Lynn, you're doing great. Anybody else? Let's see if I go. Yeah, I can see it on Thank this. You. <laughs> oh, there's. Yes, Madeline, good. It's a little light, but I can tell that everything's pretty much coming along. It needs to be. Hey, Fitzgerald, if you want to hold yours back up again, I'm going to spotlight you so Jeff can see. Bring it out just a little bit. <laughs> can you bring it back a little bit? And, there, and up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. It's the trouble of virtual world. That was great. Yeah, you're fine. It was good. Good to go. All right. Uh, so we're going to move on to the actual starting to make it look like somebody and something and hopefully you. Um, so let's go with the nose. Right now we have, let me put this board up here real quick. We have just a line. 
but I'm going to show you some simple ways to draw the nose. Obviously, there's several ways. Um, it depends on the angle of where your head is. If you're up, looking up, you're going to see your nostrils. If you're looking more solid straight at us, you're not going to see the nostrils. I know a lot of times we seem inclined to really put the nostrils in there and we end up kind of looking like pigs. We don't want to look like a pig, so let's not do that. Um, we want to have more of a, the nose is really comes in building the structure of the nose is more, uh, you can do more of that when you actually do the painting. But basically what we're going to do, just to give us some, 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 some starting point, is this is going to be the main part of your nose, just draw a circle. And I think, I hope, I think everybody could probably still draw a circle. We're going to draw another circle for the smaller part of the nose. Nose smaller parts than nose. And it looks kind of funny now, but what you're going to do, let me get a darker mark. When you go in and actually form the nostril, you see my dark lines are coming in now, and you're going to come up and go around the, those shapes that you just did with the circles. And that's going to give you structure. You see how it's darker and gives you that that nice clean nose line that kind of ends up in the end, you're gonna have like that. So I used to tell my students, you can actually, you can skip that step and just do a C, a line, and a backward C, and you have a nose. Because later on, you're gonna do a lot of shading. What we're doing now is all just sketching. Um, when we get into the painting, we're going to do hard lines and soft lines and hard shadows and soft shadows. And that's really going to help create the dimensional quality and make it look more like a painting. Right now, it's just a sketch. This is the time where you're, just, you're putting in the, the shapes, making sure that that nose looks like yours, um, but you know, getting those right lines in order to create that shape. Oh. Hey, Jeff, you said that you don't want our noses to look like pigs, but do you know which animals are the most famous painters? Oh, here we go. No, I do not. <laughs> oh, Picasso and Vincent Van Gogh. Ah, <laughs> huh? ah. Huh? See, I thought I was gonna be doing the dad jokes. I don't need to now. Yeah, you have me covered. Oh, man, my dry erase wacky. Draw on paper. All right, I'm gonna give my guy a nose down here. Now, when I say hard lines and soft lines, let me pull this one up here, final piece. So, so when she's doing her drawing, all she did at the beginning for the line work, the sketch, is just that shape for the nose, which is that line right there. We're not drawing the bridge of the nose yet. That's what's called a soft line and a soft shadow. Because if you drew that in there real harsh, it's gonna look more cartoony and we're kind of going for realism sort of. So uh, you wanna keep that right for right now. There's no lines there. It's just gonna be this line at the base of the nose, which creates that nostril and bridge, but not bridge. What is this called? The ball. The ball of the nose, thank you. No, that sounds like it might be the scientific term we got, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, so we have a nose, we have eyes. Again, we'll, we'll go back to the eyes later, but we have eyes, at least right now. The mouth is something that um, a lot of people struggle with. It's not the easiest shape to draw. I have recommended in these workshops that you draw your mouth closed. It could be smiling, but closed, because sometimes when you draw a mouth open, smiling, uh, you get kind of a, a, a what's the term? It's I, I want to say chiclets, but that's not very nice. Um, it looks like uh, a checkerboard, maybe. That's not any nicer, actually. Um, it's just hard to draw a smile. We can do that, but I think closing uh, the mouth with a closed mouth smile is probably easier in this situation. And again, the lip shape, there are some hard lines, but mostly those are soft lines. When you go in to draw your lip, you have your, I'm gonna get this right, because we talked about it last time, it's the Cupid's bow. I didn't get that actually, Maria whispered it to me. But anyways, I'm, not, I'm okay with that, here we go. So that Cupid's bow right there, which is kind of a U shape, just under the nostril, uh, the ball 
of the, the main part of the nose, that U shape creates your lip shape. So look at your lips or think about how deep you want that bow to be. And that's gonna be the beginning of your lip. Is it a little tiny? If you, can, if you can write the letter U, you can do it. Just a really light U. And you're gonna come down and meet that other line we already drew. And again, we can, we can make the, the details of that shape later, but basically we're just putting a shape in for the lips that we can go back in and manipulate later. Still drawing really light. And then the bottom lip is, again, it's a really soft line. So we're just gonna sketch it for now. We're not gonna draw a whole lot because it'll be mostly shadows that create that shape later. But it depends on how big your lip is on the bottom. So you're gonna come down and kind of make a, a really wide U shape and come back up. You're not gonna go all the way to the end of that line because your shit, lips doesn't go, your lips don't always go to the end of that line. It's that bottom lip, how long it kind of peaks, uh, how far it peaks out at you there how much further you want to go down there. But basically you want to put a shape in there, just a simple line for the shape right now. If anybody wants to know how they're doing, go ahead and hold them up and, and we'll take a look. All right, Jamie Pell family, just a little closer. Drew. Drew Ross. Okay. Oh, you're doing it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Drew, very, very nice. Drew Ross. All right, I'm looking at the next one. Yes, 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 yes. You're doing great. That is an excellent nose if I've ever seen one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. big almond eyes. I love it. Awesome. I see. Uh, yep. And then the lines for your structure is a little dark, but you can paint those out later. I uh, wouldn't worry about it. Looks good. Nicely done. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, so um, what we have in front of us is our structure. That's the end of our structural drawing. So now um, we're going to start actually drawing, drawing shapes that make it more look, look, look more like us, okay? If that makes sense. So what you have in front of you is where we are. We have all the things in the right place. So then we're gonna start looking at this a little bit darker. And in this drawing I have in front of me, I've taken away the structural lines and I just have my initial shapes. So what I want you you to do is look at your head shape because we all have different shapes that create that we have right now a generic egg but you're not a generic egg you're someone special so i want you to <laughs> i want you to that was inspirational um i you want you to egg. um where so i have a, uh, used to have a harder jawline but it's still have a pretty strong jawline and i have uh, really strong cheekbones so my this is actually gonna be me, believe it or not, uh, on this that I'm drawing now. I'm gonna come in on that egg shape, right just below the eye to create this pretty high jaw, I'm sorry, um, high chin and that, that really strong jaw. And I come in, my chin comes in like that even a little bit more. So you're gonna take that egg shape and draw over that darker to start to look like, to make it look like more like your head. If you need to adjust it, if you can see my hands, you need to adjust it this way or that way, that's fine. Um, you can start to think about how much space you're gonna need for the hair, but that will come in later. One thing you might wanna look at now, even if you have long hair, is how big your forehead is, where your hair starts. You can do that now if you want. Um, I have what's called a five head, not a forehead because it's so big. So I left a lot of room for my forehead, five head. Um, so you'll see that later as my hair comes in. Even if you have a three head, you are equally valuable here. <laughs> All 
while everybody's working on their foreheads for a minute. Uh, hey, Jeff, did you hear about the artists that always took things too far? No. <laughs> just didn't know where to draw the line. I hope these are all, these are all originals, right? You don't have to I wish, I wish. <laughs> I was gonna say, you need to write a book. I like it, I like it. So I have one, I just made this one up. Here we go. So the way we do this process, we've been doing this process now um, three times and since it's not broke, we're not gonna fix it. Anybody broke? Google it, then you'll be laughing. <laughs> okay, I think everybody has their head shape and we're really, we're doing great on our pacing. Um, that, which is, um, makes me happy because I'll make sure you guys have plenty of time tonight. Again, you're going to have plenty of time to work on these after we end our call tonight, but I wanted to make sure that we have plenty of time for questions. Feel free to throw a chat in question. Um, we'll answer it. Um, if, if I'm moving too fast, you can just say simply slow down. Uh, that's fine too. The part we're going to get to right now is really what what it is about you that makes you you. And you can, this is something I do in caricature a lot. I try to find that one feature of a person and really exaggerate that. But since we're not exaggerating tonight, you can still look at your face and think, what makes me me? Do I have um, big eyebrows? Do I have, for me personally, I have a big nose, so I tend to exaggerate that when I'm drawing it in exaggerated form. But even when I'm not, my nose tends to be bigger than the rest of my face um, or features on my face at least. So I also, I have, um, pretty dark, dark eyebrows. So I, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to get. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I've already done this on me, but I want you to really look at. I, I'm not drawing really harsh eyebrows right now, but I'm just simply laying down some darker value. When I talk about value, what I mean is, um, our value system is usually one to five. One being the lightest, five being the darkest. Everything we've been drawing this point is kind of around a two. Right now we're going to start pushing three, four, and five to really start making a line drawing for our painting. So really get in there and start creating those shapes, darkening your lines. Where's my, I'm going to do something else here. Okay. One thing about the eyes, let's go back to the eyes. Excuse my dirty board, it didn't erase very well. Right now we have this. That's what we have for our, our eye shape. And it is admittedly rel relatively generic. Um, our, eyes, our eyes are not that generic. If you notice, if you look at your eye shape, and I'm gonna show you mine, I hope it's not too creepy for everybody. Um, this is my eye shape. And as you can see, it's not a football, but it actually, my drawing here, and this is part where you might erase even some, you're gonna come down, my eye actually comes down like this, and it goes back up. And then I have, I have a little bit of an eyelid that comes down and back. So I'm going to cover that eyeball. Remember, um, this is kind of gross, but it's Halloween, so who cares? We have, our eyeballs are like little golf balls stuck in our head. So think about it when you're drawing your eyelid, that eyelid is wrapping around that golf ball to create that three-dimensional space. So you're going to close that up a little bit with your football shape to draw those eyelids. And you might even, again, erase a little bit to create that visual. And it make, make people think that you have that dimensional golf ball resting inside that socket. So I'm gonna erase a little bit here and there. So now my shape is less of a football, but then it becomes more of that eye shape that we're trying to achieve. And inside, um, this will also be created by the paint, but. I'm not gonna to change too much there right now because I'll be using paint to do that later, but you can go ahead and sort of mark some of that in and mark some of that value. And then with this, it's really hard to see on this board. There's even some, I don't know what, again, I'm, my anatomy classes failed me, but there's some little gooey things that are inside here that you wanna take a look at. That's what they're called, I think, gooey things. Uh, Go in there and they actually create some shapes. That's not a very clean version of them here. You can see in this drawing, 
you can see that they're start to kind of wrap around there. And again, there's some value there. So now, generally what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the very details of my face. And again, it's, sometimes it's easier if you have a picture, um, but if you have a mirror too, you're looking at where those shapes relate to each other. I don't want to get too technical, but I'll, I'll say this. Really, drawing is all about shapes. If you've, if you've nothing else, you've learned that so far in this workshop. But what we're doing now is how those shapes change and react to each other. So my eyebrow is right up against my eyelid. It may not be on yours, but on mine, my eyebrow comes right up against my eyelid, then it goes up. What does your eyebrow do? What does your eyelid do? Look at all those, what we call, I'm gonna say this right, but it's gonna sound wrong. Look at all those spatial relationships. Not special, but they're all special. Trust me, you're all special. But we're looking for spatial, meaning space. How do these relate to each other spatially? That's really hard to say right. So how far are your eyes apart? Well, we already did that because we had our nice measurements, but look about, take a look at where if you have, like for me, I have this really harsh eyebrow, eyebrow crease. And as I get older, it gets darker and deeper. Then again, we're not drawing that bridge of that nose, but you may want to lay a little bit of value in, just so when you paint, you can see it a little bit. Do you see how, how I'm continuing to work on this eye and it's starting to look a little bit like me? A little bit? And you can also, I, I, on this drawing, I started to draw the, create, I created the shape of the hair. So let's talk about hair for just a second. The hair is, um, obviously we all have different types of hair, different lengths of hair. One thing you'll be really careful of is try not to draw every hair on your head. I know that's impossible. What I mean by that is your hair is a collection of, your hair shape is a collection of tiny hairs and that creates that shape. So instead of drawing all those hairs for right now, what does that shape look like? What does that general shape of your hair look like based on all those tiny hairs coming together as a team to create your awesome hair shape? Uh, mine creates this kind of wave of sorts um, that kind of goes to one side. You know, if you have long hair, um, it'll go kind of flat and down. I will say this, um, if you normally keep your hair uh, in a ponytail or a bun, that's certainly fine, but obviously these, these portraits are straight on. So we're not gonna see your ponytail. It might be easier, even if you always put your hair up, to maybe put your hair down for this drawing. Um, the other thing I want you to do, uh, and this is not mandatory, but it is helpful for us when we go to cut them out. If you have long hair, let's see if you can see behind me. My, can you see these? Okay, or I've lost the picture of myself. Okay, yeah. So on some of these, you can actually see that they um, they left white space here, but some of these. Let's see if I can take this off here. We got a little closer. Jeff, you keep losing yourself in the art. <laughs> My jokes aren't getting any better, ladies and gentlemen. How many do you have? We don't want to run out. Oh, I can do this all night long. Okay, good, good, good. That makes me feel better. So there's, again, there's Angelica. Um, we, we will cut that off, but some people did this. I thought it was kind of nice, is if you kind of have this, you bring the hair underneath your chin kind of an abstract way. Again, not mandatory, but it is a, a nice, another way of doing it. The hair is completely up to you and how you do that. Um, it's your individual style. And again, I hope that we can see that, by the way, your individual style and how you approach this drawing. Again, even if it's been 20, 30, 40 years since you've drawn something, um, take that away from this. Forget about that for right now. Forget about the fact that it's been that long. Just draw. I mean, this is not, this is nothing serious. Nobody's, you know, we're not, this is not a risk we're taking. We're just drawing. So we're just having fun. Jeff, do you know the um, best way to inspire an artist? No. How Easily. is that? Easily. Uh, Easily. Oh. Wow. It's a shame that we can't hear everybody laughing because they're muted. 
he's never going to join me again. Okay, so when we're doing our draw, our line drawing, we're going to be painting these, so you don't have to worry too much about value. And again, value is that structure between one and five, one being lightest, like white, and five being the darkest, like black. Um, but it does help you to get a sense of what your, the direction your painting is going to go. So if you want to start adding a little bit of value in your drawing. So what I've done here is gone in and just kind of add some, some more darks and some lights. And you can see, bring us a little bit closer. There we go. See my behind the scenes too. That's okay. Um, right in here, you can see that even though I'm not doing line work now, I'm adding a little bit of value. And this is really just to see if it's going to look like me because we're going to cover it up later, anyways. But we want to make sure that we do have a nice, clean drawing before we start painting. So, all those relationships. So, I can cover a couple things um, that maybe you're, you're thinking to yourself, I'm having a hard time with. Now maybe let's start with something you, I'm gonna just assume. Uh, the lips, go back to the mouth. If you look at mine, the only thing I have is one hard line that creates, is that where those two lips come together creates a, a hard line. And that's gonna remain dark throughout the entire painting. What I didn't do is draw a hard line for the top and bottom lip because that's just value, if that makes sense. So it's not line work, it's value. When I go back to my painting, I'll make that value. And again, some people uh, feel more comfortable making that line work. I'll go back to some of the ones that are behind me and the one right here I'm gonna grab. I mean, she did hard lines for her lips and it looks just fine. Whatever your comfort level is, I'm, I'm here just to kind of guide you. Um, you don't have to listen to everything I say. I hope you uh, can take your own uh, uh, approach to this as well and do what makes you feel comfortable but also you know, have a little bit of guidance as well. And so if you have facial features that you want to put in there, uh, of course, I have a beard. So I went ahead and laid that down. Again, I'll probably, when I go in to draw it or to paint it, um, I'll just throw in a couple lines just for some direction for myself. Um, if you have glasses, this now's the time to go ahead and knock those in. Earrings, nose rings, eyelashes. Be really careful with eyelashes. Eyelashes can sometimes be dangerous. When you're drawing eyelashes, it's the same thing I said about the hair. Um, do you remember what I said about the hair and what it does, uh, Angelica? The hair creates the shape. Yes. So the same thing with the eyelashes. Even those of us who have shorter eyelashes, we still have them, but they create that shape. And so it's not... I know we think that sometimes in our mind that eyelashes kind of look like that. Not necessarily. Um, usually they're going to be more of a shape that create this kind of darkness and maybe a couple little hairs come up, but not very many uh, that are visible. It's more of a dark shape. So be mindful of that. Take a look at your eyes. Um, I doubt that any of you have eyelashes that look like this bottom one. Um, it makes a wonderful bookstore logo, though. Um, if you're Paula Clendenin, she uses that kind of abstraction. And that's a whole other conversation is that there's a number of artists that do really well with abstraction. And they take a shape and they change the proportions, the size, the shape. Um, those of you who know uh, Picasso's work, uh, he does that uh, very well locally. Again, Paula Clendenin, uh, Charlie Hamilton. People like that, they see things in a different way. And that's what we're here to do tonight is you, I'm just giving you guidance. That hopefully you'll see it your way. That it, the way you draw yourself is way different than I would draw you, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I would most likely do a caricature of you, of course, but um, draw you, be you, you know, just do you. Does anybody wanna show us uh, where they're at so far? All right, Drew Ross, we're back to you. Oh, I love those eyebrows, those lashes. Very nice. That Whoa. is some magnificent facial hair. Lots of detail. 
for Lauren Cooper. We'll get Come on, you want to tell yours? No, I'm still working. Thank you. Lauren, do you want to hold yourself up again? Anna Daly. Kathy, great job. Great job. Looks like you've got one eyebrow arched. Anna, very nice. Very good, Amber. Oh, you don't look like an Amber. Oh, that one's the Amber. Okay, we got two on one. I see it, okay. Nicely done. Yeah, I'm just going by the names that are on your um, Zoom call in, so if it's not actually Amber, that's okay too. It would be creepy if we had done that much research, so, you know. This is your time. It's your opportunity to shine. Kate Fitzgerald is good. Bring up a little bit so I can see your chin, bottom part. Oh, I lost her. Kate Fitzgerald, can you hold yours back up again for Jeff? Yeah. And uh, oh, can you bring it up a little bit? Can you pull it back towards there you just a little bit? Right. Okay. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Great. I, I see it. a couple of few are just um, not showing theirs yet, and that's fine. We're not pressuring anybody, except for Brittany Javins. Why are you not sharing your video, Brittany Javins? <laughs> Although the headshot you have as your uh, go-to is pretty nice. No response. <laughs> There we go. Hold on. Oh, there she is. Okay. Great. Hey, there's Brittany Javins. Nicely done. Are you working outside? Oh, you, you are. Yeah. There's, you have a Mark Javins with you, too. Look at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. whoa. And you have a photo bomber. <laughs> Mark, are you, where are you? I mean, I know you're on the chair, but how's your drawing? It's not good. <laughs> Sorry, I muted. Oh, no, you muted me. You're back. Okay. It's, uh, I'm not artistic at all, so. I, I like it a lot. <laughs> so, there's the that. Hair's the, the hair's the easy part, so. That's a great head shape. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got some folks in my background, too, if they want to. Okay, we'll go ahead and announce that now. Thank you, Javins. Looking good. And guests. <laughs> oh, I, I get a thumbs up. Thank you. Oh, that's all their folks. Yeah, that's good. Ooh, I love that one. Let me see, let me see your actual face. We're moving around a little bit, bobbing and weaving. Okay. Oh, you're drawing him. No, I draw myself. Oh, that's your, okay. It's your drawing that somebody else is holding it right now. Yes. Dog. I get it. Makes sense. Priorities. Yeah. Okay. Um, what we're going to do here, um, I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. Um, Angelica, I'm going to toss it over to you and Maria, and uh, we're going to just give them time to work on their drawing. This is your final drawing. So make sure your drawing is where you want to be and make it look like what you want to want to make it look like. Make sure you have a nice, dark, crisp line drawing. Um, and we're going to check back in. I'm just going to go away for a few minutes, but I'm going to be back. And we're going to take a final look before we start painting. We're about halfway through. So here you go. Have some time to do this and I'll be back. We'll con continue. All right. So. I am not out of uh, dad jokes for you all. Sorry, go ahead and feel free. I'll give you guys just a second for each of them because uh, I know that uh, 
a lot of you guys are muted, but uh, why was the artist afraid he might go to jail? Do we have any guesses in the chat? Because he was afraid he'd get framed. <laughs> oh, I don't have any problem laughing at my own jokes. Um, what does Salvador Dali have for breakfast? Anybody? Anybody? Sardines. Sardines? That's a good guess. Anybody else? A bowl of cereal. Cereal? Cereal? Huh? <laughs> Um, what's orange and sounds like a parrot? a parrot? Oh, yeah, a carrot. I got backseat drivers over here. If anybody wants to hold up their art again, we would love to see some of the, the folks that are muted out. Again, no pressure, but there are some great names. It looks like we've got a Terry, a Lynn, an Amber. Very nice, Ben and Eva. Eva, is that right? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Oh, um, yep. My name's actually Evie. Evie. Evie, I just wasn't doing a great job reading, but it looks like you're doing a great job. You've got some very impressive hair. That's a nice job. I like that. You've done a great job with your hard lines. Very nice, very nice. Who else do we have? Okay, Lynn, great nose. I love that. Your eyes look beautiful. A window into your soul, really, if I must say so. <laughs> I need to figure out how to do the inside, but yeah. <laughs> it might get easier with the paint. Is this your first uh, time doing a self-portrait? Uh, no, but I'm just a little behind. <laughs> oh, I think that you, you know, you, you were very impressive. It looks very great to me. I am not the resident artist, but I have a lot of opinions. Do we have anybody else on the chat? It looks like Drew Ross is back up. Maybe. Oh, very nice. I love those glasses and earrings. You got all the accessories, girl. Who's our waiver in the background? <laughs> Oh, it looks like we've got several artists in the house. So, the you want to show yeah, yours? No. Well, I don't care to. Thank you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I said I don't care to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so I have, to, I have to know, are you muted? How old are you? Is this your first self-portrait? Jay? Jay Lee? Is this your first self-portrait? Yes. How are you feeling about it? I don't know. You don't know? No. You're going to be a part of history. You're going to be on the MLK mural in Charleston forever. You're going to be a part of history. <laughs> She's got the permanent markers. She knows it's going to be permanent. I love it. Very nice. Very nice. Are you, so do you have some blue in your braids? Yes. And what color paint did you choose? Purple. Okay. So we're going to use those darker values for those braids, maybe. That's very nice. I love it. I have more colors. Oh. Fabulous. She's an artist at heart. Very artistic. Right down to the fibers of her hair. Who else do we have? Anna? Anna, it looks like you're tuning in. You look like you've not put you maybe put your pencil do you care to show there's no pressure uh well um 
I don't think I look like I do now, but uh, there's mine. And a little closer. Okay. Oh, perfect. You've got earrings too. Beautiful. Big lid. One eye is never open as much as the other. It just can't do it. And so uh, that's what I accentuated. <laughs> anyway, and Pete is next to me. Go ahead, show yours, Pete. No, yes, that's... Pete, let's see. Go. I I'll show Pete's because he's Wait, just I, being gotta, difficult. I've got to put the glasses on. <laughs> oh. oh, we haven't gotten that far. Or you're doing it without him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just hasn't gotten there yet. Okay. Well, <laughs> We're, we're, uh, we might need glasses to see you from the mural if, if you don't get those, get those on there. And I don't ordinarily wear glasses, so I didn't uh, paint those in. It's just when I'm up close. Well, the beautiful thing about this is you can paint yourself however you want to see yourself. Oh, God, I, I'm going to start again. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you right now, this is, uh, I already did mine and I made my face a lot less apple shaped than it is in real life. I've got a very slender face in my uh, portrait, if you know what I mean. So I'm definitely drawing me how I want to see me. Okay, and I'm going with the younger face. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Who else do we have on? We just saw uh, Kathy Rushworth. If you want to turn your camera back on, we can take a look at yours. Here we go. Oh, great job. Great. So we've got a Kathy, and who's the little artist? Oh, Kathy, I think you're muted. Thomas and Thomas. Mary. And is this your first portrait, Thomas? Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Did you know that you were going to be um, an artist with art on display for all of Charleston to see? No. <laughs> you didn't think your first time doing this, you were gonna be on, on a mural? <laughs> Say no. No. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. You must be great at this because they were really excited to have you. That's awesome. Uh, were there three, Kathy? Did you have one more? Oh. Yep. Here's Mary. Oh, very nice, Mary. I love the hair. I love the eye placement. It looks like you've got everything lined out real well. Very nice. Okay. And Elizabeth Turner, I know that I know you, so I feel no guilt calling you out. Let's see it. All right. <laughs> That was great. Sassy. Oh, you got a hot, you got a whole room full of uh, full of bands <laughs> over here. That's very nice. Yeah, those uh, those wouldn't be the earrings that you made, would they? Yes. <laughs> very nice. That's yeah, fabulous. Yeah. I can't I wait to see them in color. Hers yeah, yeah. <laughs> was good. Looks like we got another holder upper at Drew Ross. Those eyebrows are very emotive. <laughs> They're fabulous. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> you're off mute over here. Since you're laughing anyway. Anybody else? Does anybody have any questions? Anything that you're having? difficulties with at this point that we can help with or is everybody feeling pretty good about where they're at what do you think you needed just a few more minutes to do the drawing maybe just for everybody to catch up get to the same, same. Yeah, because we're as soon as Jeff gets back in we're going to jump right into painting. So now would be a good time for a refreshment break, bathroom break. Check out the full schedule at festivalcharleston.com to see all of the other amazing things that you can enjoy for the rest of this week. Guys, did you know that they're doing Shrek? Festival has Shrek. I'm really excited about that. He's green. Some of you have green. It's basically like some of you are Shrek. You know, in a good way.
let's see the ones in your house, Angelica. How's everybody doing there? We, oh, we definitely have some people that have been eager to show off. Bring them closer, guys. Come on. We need to get a little bit closer to the oh, sorry. sorry. I'm helping. Maybe I'm hurting. That looks great. Jenna's. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Jenna, you totally know what Jeff was talking about, how your hair just kind of takes up a, a field, and then you're going to be able to add that texture back in as you layer the different values of paint in. You did a great job with that. Thank you. Very nice. Um, great job. <laughs> I think you kind of got off easy not having to draw a chin. Any guys with beards? <laughs> um, and okay. Me too. You guys, a household full of talent. Yeah. Half of this household full of talent uh, was just kind of told that they were doing this. So I think that they're doing great. They woke up today and found out. That's what we like to call being voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> My sister has gone off to uh, take care of her baby, but she also, ooh, I'm trying to get her in. The light is weird. She did a lot of erasing, but hers also is very nice. Everything with the facial features and everything. That looks great. Yeah. Josh, where'd yours go? And okay, so he's got some big hair in his. Kind of hard to see. Josh, come here so they can see your hair so they know how you've done. <laughs> oh. Just just stepping on paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Yeah. Perfect. Lots of self, first time self portraits. Well, Karen's got hers to show. Let's take a look at that. Karen, great job. Oh, that is fantastic, Karen. Karen, is this your first uh, portfolio? Por self portrait. Self portrait. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> No, not really. Oh. I wish I, you know, had that kind of talent. Mine did not look that good. Thank you. Yes. Great. Anybody else that wants to uh, be brave and give it a go before Jeff comes back? Oh, have we seen Paula's yet? Yeah, let me spotlight on Paula. Paula, that looks so good. I love those earrings, Paula. That looks great, Paula. Very nice. I might have to borrow those. You might have to help me out. How's it going? Good. I'm back. Oh, I think we got Jayla still, just Jaya. Oh, yeah. That looks great. Nicely done. I love that hair you can put in with paint, too, that dark five. We'll talk about in a moment. Good job. Nice job. Perfect. Perfect. We've got lots of talented artists in here, Jeff. They've been doing a great job. I can't wait to see these. This, is so, this process has been so much fun already, and we're just getting started. So if you're having a good time and you love your drawing, just kind of do this at the camera. <laughs> this is the new sign of I'm having a great time. This is going well. See all that? I don't want this, but that big thing is out of sync. It's out of sync, isn't it? It's out of gallery view, not out of sync. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, is your iPhone off, Jeff? My iPhone? Oh, it may have like, gone to sleep mode or something? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. All right. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna go switch this one to gallery. Okay, all right, so um, this is not a test, but I do wanna move on. So if you're, um, I want you to stop working on your drawing right now and have something in front of you that you feel good about, um, but we, we can also go back in with paint and work on. So we're gonna transition from drawing to painting. What I want you to do is um, pull out your paints, the little uh, two ounce containers, and lay them out on your space in front of you. In your kit, you should have a plate. That's gonna be your palette. And then you're gonna have your colors. So I'll lay mine out here. Boom. We've been talking a little bit about value. As you can see on these, in these little tubs I gave you, there are five values there. I want you to kind of arrange those from dark to light. That's got our tell right there. Dark to light. So that's what you're gonna be working with the rest of the time tonight. And I know we all have different colors, but they all have five values. One being the lightest and five being the darkest. Now, it's important to remember that we do not have black and white. So your whites are all gonna be the lightest color and your darks are gonna be all the darkest color. So right now, once you do a slide all the other colors away and we're just using your dark. And you should have two brushes in your kit. I didn't mention this before we started, um, and maybe I should have, maybe some of you had the, the foresight to do this. If you had other brushes at your home, you can use those as well. Um, what we're going to do first, before we start painting our painting, we're going to, what we do kind of lock in our drawing is what we call it. We're going to take our darkest dark, and this one's been worked on a little bit, so please forgive, but we're going to take our darkest dark, and what we're going to do with your brush is go over those lines that I kept calling hard lines. So going back to this one for a second, I'm gonna go over on my poly tab, I'm gonna go over the outline of the, of the head, because that's a dark line, and just establish all of those dark, dark lines. So your darkest darks, not your dark shapes, just your dark lines. So you're not gonna paint all of your hair right now if you have black hair, you're just putting in some, some line work. So watch what I'm doing here. So my hair is pretty dark, it's almost black. All I'm doing right now is kind of establishing going over my drawing, establishing that shape. So when I go in to paint it, I'll know where things are, okay? So going back in, I'm just doing some, some outlining, developing that line, so it creates the shape. We're not doing detailed line work, just structural line work. If that's the difference is, this structural line work to begin with is just helping you take your, from, go from your drawing to your painting and not uh, what we call lose our drawing. So when we're painting, we make sure that we don't paint over our drawing, drawing to the point where we don't see the drawing. So what I like to do is, is go in first and kind of create a, some dark lines to make sure that drawing stays right where it's supposed to be. So ignore that I've already gone forward with my skin tones. Just go in and do kind of all those dark lines here. I'm gonna go do my chin here. Give you a couple minutes to do that. Get some water. Yeah, there's a sink right here. I'll grab it. These brushes that we sent you are kind of one-use brushes, right? If you wash them out, you can use them again. Uh, you do not have to return those, but uh, general brush care is making sure that you clean your brush off as soon as you get done using it so it gets cleaned off. Uh, obviously, you want to clean it between colors as well. Some of those details are a little hard with this brush. If you use the edge, closer and it's a little bit tricky because it's not ideal but you want to go in kind of the edge of the brush 
and just barely touch the poly tab, it'll create a nice small line. This, again, not the most ideal brush for this situation, but unfortunately we weren't able to send a whole mess of brushes out. But. Get it. Uh, what did I do? I touched. I touched the wrong thing. He's back. <laughs> okay. So you can see, even though I've gone a little bit further in this particular painting, you can see those dark lines, and again. Some of those darkest lines I didn't include in my initial first pass, even like the eyebrows and things like that. I'm waiting to do those later. I might put a little bit of value in, just like you know, a little bit of this kind of thing, just to show that it's going to be darker later. The one thing I didn't tell you guys yet, um, because we're not to that point, but use the water, uh, it, your water cup and your water to move that paint a little bit smoother. This poly tab is. Um, not like a smooth canvas. It, it does uh, kind of eat the paint a little bit. Um, so it's going to take a little bit longer to paint it than you normally would a canvas. But also if you lose, use a little bit of water, you can move the paint a little bit more fluidly. No pun intended. Yes, it was. Uh, what does the mama color wheel say to the baby color wheel? I almost feel like I get this one. I don't know. Don't use that tone with me. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to go back and watch the video of the ones I missed. Good stuff. Um, I know that we've mentioned this before. We are recording, so you can go back. Um, and I'm just going to mention this as well. We are getting ready to announce more workshops, as we've talked about many times on this call. Uh, we're going to need a, close to a thousand, if not more, portraits to do this piece. And we're about 200 at this point. Uh, so we're going to need a lot more. Um, that may be done with a various way, uh, through various ways, whether large workshops, we're going to do small workshops, small uh, group workshops, still virtually, of course. Uh, we're going to do a situation where you can just come and pick up a kit and do it on your own. So if you know somebody that wants to do this project but doesn't really want to um, listen to me for two hours, they can, we're going to have instructions on how you can do that either just picking up a kit and doing it on your own. We will have YouTube videos out there um, to you know, follow along with this workshop if you wanted to go back. Uh, if you, wanted to, you, you, you went to your friends and said how cool this very thing was, because in fact it was, I'm sure. You're thinking in your own head right now, how cool this was. Maybe not, that's okay too. Uh, so <laughs> you can go back and do that. This, Part of the process takes some minutes. That's why I'm kind of just talking it out. I'm not doing much now because I know you need that time. And you don't have to rush. We, we have plenty of time and then um, you'll have time after this call as well to finish it up. You'll have a week to get it back to us. And that's really important that you get it back to us because we need it uh, for this mural. Uh, it'll be, your original painting will be on this wall. Uh, it's gonna be there for a long while. So uh, we wanna make sure that your, yours is include, included. Um, can I go and answer that? Um, Brittany says, are we doing gray holes yet? <laughs> Brittany Javins said that? Yeah. <laughs> Brittany Javins doesn't have to worry about that, right? So you don't have to worry about wrinkles? Uh, no, so yeah, um, the, the serious answer is those are sometimes can be on some of us hard lines, some of them are soft lines. So if you're doing hard lines, like right here on mine, I didn't do the darkest value, but I did make sure that I made notation uh, visual notation I have a little bit right there. Now I went ahead and put it a little bit darker because it is looking at my reference. I'll go back to the reference. If you look at my reference, it's not a five, it's more of a four or a three. So after we do this, these dark lines as our line drawing, we're going to start asking ourselves all those questions. Our skins, what value? Our shadows, those kind of things. So don't get these line drawings in first. So the long answer. Um, was all what I just said, basically, Brittany, no, not yet. Uh, 
I see a lot of heads down. It means they're still working on the line work, which is fine. We're, we're in good shape. Moving right along. Can I take a random look at somebody's line work so far? Just to see where you are. Anybody volunteering? Okay, Drew Ross, looks like they're pulling theirs up. Yeah. Yes, uh, Drew and Kate. It looks better over down here. It looks, yeah, that's exactly what you wanna do. Go ahead, throw those eyeballs in there too, your pupils. Um, you wanna make sure those are nice and dark. Angelica has one coming up, there it is. Nice. Um, great. What, who's, where's the actual person? Oh, there you are. Okay. Nice. Okay. That's good. That's Ryan. <laughs> hey, Ryan, what's up? That's Jenna, good. Do you want to show yours? Oh, sure. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I really don't have any uh, critical feedback right now for those. They look great. You're moving right along. Yeah. And just go along, you know, make sure you go along the, the inside the chin, make sure you establish your cheeks and your chin, otherwise you're good. Lynn, you just popped up. Did you want to show us that? Or did I put you on the spot? <laughs> oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, um, looks great. Let's see, yeah, um, keep on working. It looks great. And uh, most of you, or all of you that I've seen actually, you've, you've managed to already, just in the line drawing, you found that feature that is um, unmistakably yours and makes it you. Um, and it's really important in these things. You know, we're not gonna get every detail right because you haven't been studying uh, academic portraiture for you know, all this time, but you're going to get something that looks like you and you feel good about. That's all we're wanting here. I'm going to give about two more minutes and we're going to move on to the next step. If you're not there yet in two minutes, that's okay too. Um, we want to make sure we get as much of this instruction in on this call as possible. I keep looking at this screen instead of looking at this screen. So everybody's gonna see me in profile the whole time. You know, one thing, you know, some of you uh, may know people that um, do a lot of portraiture. We, we are inviting all talent levels. Um, and I, when I say talent, all I mean is that you've been doing it longer. You know, we all have the natural talent already in us. We just practice more, you know. Some of us do it longer than others and that's fine. Um, does anybody, uh, you can wave your hands or whatever. Um, do you feel like you've been, if you haven't done it for a while, do you feel like you've been transported back to that time when you were drawing on a regular basis and you feel like, oh, I remember this feeling of drawing myself and having fun doing it? Or do you feel like super frustrated and wonder uh, why it looks the way it does when you want it to look another way? That's fine too. It happens to me all the time. When you're doing a portrait or an illustration in my, in my world, sometimes it's not exactly what I want in my head uh, that gets to the paper. And we're still early on. You're, you're going to have a chance to kind of tweak that. So if you're a little bit frustrated right now, that's fine. Um, we'll get there. But I hope you're not, actually. Um, somebody in Angelica's camp's holding one up. This is Josh. Josh. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I love the hair. Can I see the actual Josh? Oh yeah. You know what? I'm gonna challenge you, Josh, if it's okay. Can you make the hair even bigger? Can you make your hair even bigger? I love the hair. 
I, I think the only thing I would say, make it a little more uh, robust down here, but that's okay too. It's fine. I think it looks great. I love the way you did the, the, the ovals to create that general shape. It looks great. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. I'm going to, I know you're probably, some of you might still be working on your line work, but I really do want to go to the next step. Uh, it's another slow step, so you'll be able to catch up, I hope. Um, we're going to do the skin tones, and everybody has different skin tones. That's the beautiful thing about this project, um, is that um, it's all about including everyone. Uh, it's all about equality, the same things that Dr. King, um, his message and was spot on, and we want to make sure that we, uh, this mural reflects that. And so your skin tone is, is not purple, green, or blue but we have in front of you a set of values. So take a look at your face and you're gonna select the value that you think your face might be. And we're gonna do what's called, a, we're gonna lay down kind of a flat wash. Um, this is just to establish that color and value. It's not gonna create all the shapes yet. We're just creating kind of a, what I like to call um, a local color, a, a solid wash. I would recommend um, that you, you use the lighter tones, so one, two, or three, because in order to create your shadows, you're going to use the, those darker tones to create shadows, because again, we do not have white, so we cannot create highlights other than using the lightest light as a wash. So basically what we're doing is we're working from light to dark. We're laying down a light wash, and then we're going to push back all those shapes. When I say push back, we're gonna use the values, the darker values, to create that three-dimensional quality of your, of your face. And trust me, it's really easy, I promise. But before we do that, you're gonna to have to lay down that lighter value. And what I want you to do is, once you pick your value, and again, most of you, I think most of these behind me, are all, I think almost all of them are value one, because value one gives you that highest highlight. So you have this brush, um, you can see here too. Again, these are not the, the best materials, but they'll work for what we're doing tonight. You're gonna to get your brush wet, not soaking wet. And I'm gonna work right out of the container and lay a little bit on my plate, just to kind of spread it around. And then go right on and just push it out. You can use the small blue one too, whatever one feels better to you. If you have other brushes too, you can get that little bit, oh, you're not seeing that on your screen there. I'm getting a little bit of water on the brush and so it moves. Not too much water because we want to make sure the paint stays fairly opaque. Angelica, do you have any opaque jokes? Paint jokes. Hmm. No, opaque, opaque jokes. Opaque jokes. Give me a minute on that. I bet I could come up with something. Okay, I'll come back to you. Well, for those of you um, that are unfamiliar with opaque, opaque is not see-through, transparent is see-through. So we're making it, we want to make sure you make that shape, or color, sorry, color, opaque, but you can use water to move it around a little bit. So it doesn't have to be super thick at this point. And again, I have a beard, so I'm not gonna worry too much about this, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of light value down here. Right now it looks like I have a white beard, which is not that far from the truth. Pins sometimes. Okay, I'm ready. Ready? Let's hear it. What is a baker's favorite place or favorite part of art class? What? Making oat cake. <laughs> that's gotta be original, it's great. That one is original, and that's why it's worse than the others. That's why it's worse than the others. You're wrong there. I think that they go with the originals, I like them. I'll have to give you, I'll have to shoot you some more, you know, subjects to cover. So again, I have a beard, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Although beards are, are not completely opaque, there's some transparency there too. So there'll be some skin showing. So I might just go ahead and dab a little bit in there. That brush actually works pretty well. I haven't used one of these before. I mean, well, I have obviously, but not on Polytab. They work pretty well. So I use the number one. I just laid in a relatively flat tone, 
ignore all the stuff I already did before in other workshops, but basically look at the forehead and the cheeks. It's flat color. And you're not using a whole lot of the paint. Um, well, when, uh, and I will mention, um, you have a week to do this. The paint usually lasts that long. We kind of tested it. it. It doesn't dry out too quickly, uh, but you don't want to leave it in um, heat. Make sure it gets closed up tightly. It's a, essentially, it's a latex, uh, exterior latex paint. So it's not uh, going to last forever. You can't recharge it with water. Um, it, once it's dry, it's dry. So, so there's your. Oh, I just wanted to ask a real quick question for everybody at home that's doing this art project is the first art project that they've done in a long time and loving it. What, what do you recommend for them to do to be more artistic in their everyday life? Well, that's a great question. Um, and I, that truly is my hope that you do this and you realize this is a lot of fun. I can do, I, I'm, I'm more capable than I thought I, I, I could be in this and other things. So um, my first go-to always for anybody that asks me that question is how can I keep uh, up with drawing and painting? I, I, I keep, a, to this day, um, I keep a sketchbook and a lot of times I'm drawing uh, people. Uh, that's what I like to draw or characters, creatures. It's just something that keeps me going. If you ask any uh, musician, you know, they, they'll play music every day. You, you, and that's not just for a professional, but just for fun. Um, there's a lot of creative things to get involved with in Charleston. Um, we do have, right now it's a little bit limited, obviously, um, but we do have some public, um, like, uncork and create and those kind of things. But a lot of that stuff, and uh, it's, they're, they're, you can do that at home, not to take away from uncork and create, they're great. But, you know, you, you could, um, or, uh, on a really cheap budget, find some paints and, and canvases and have paint nights, um, like game nights, and, and come up with a theme. You know, uh, my daughter, Sylvia, who I haven't mentioned much on this call, um, she and I will do that all the time. The other day, um, it was John Lennon's, would have been his 80th birthday, and we, we got together and started just drawing John Lennon together and didn't really care what it looked like. We just wanted to sketch out. You know, so it could be a, a family thing uh, or an individual thing. I like just drawing. Sometimes I'll come up and just kind of start sketching something that was important to me that day or something that happened that day, uh, that kind of thing. I know that you did, but I don't think they Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, good point, Maria. So I've been showing this example all night and this is in fact my daughter, Sylvia, um, who's uh, an art person. She likes to draw and paint. And it's something that she's been doing since she, I found a photograph just the other day that she was less than a year old uh, doing a painting. Um, so she really enjoys it. She's been doing it for a long time. She's been doing it for 10 years. In my mind, that's a long time. Um, I think Van Gogh only painted for three years. Is that right? Or I don't, maybe it was more than that, but he was only, he only was, recognized as an artist after he passed. So it's kind of hard to tell. He painted a lot of paintings uh, in his time. Anyways, this is Sylvia's. I think I have all the information wrong. I used to be a teacher. Uh, I've forgotten some things since then. This is uh, her painting. You can see she really had some time to get some of that value in there and whatnot. Uh, and, then, uh, and I think it looks like her uh, for the most part. So you said she was a year old when you have uh, that photo. So do, do you think that anybody, any age, any experience level can, can make art and be an artist? I believe so. Um, like I said, I put paints and a canvas in front of Sylvia uh, in her high chair. Um, and again, I have documentation of that. And it didn't stop. Uh, so yes, any age. Um, I think this is, I'm going to get this quote wrong. Um, but there was a Picasso quote that said, uh, we're all artists. Um, that some of us just decide to grow up or something like that. There's a, there's a quote out there, Picasso, that uh, it talks about that, about stopping. And why did we stop making art? And even if you did stop, you can always get back into it. Even if you don't show anybody. Although I always told my students that the most important thing you can do with your art is share it. And so we were always, I was always um, made it a really important part of what I taught them at the end of each class and make sure you take this home and show somebody. Um, it doesn't always have to be in a museum or a gallery or an exhibit, but it's just as important to show your work to friends and family as it is anybody else and try to share it as much as you can. 
and what a great opportunity this is to share your art. Your art. You don't have to be an artist. I think that's one thing that we have to really push on this is making sure people know that you don't have to be an artist to do this. I hope you can be a witness to that. So the top Google search for that, this is a Google search, so don't hold me to this, but uh, Picasso, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. I almost had it. I'm a little out of practice. Very, very close, but still excellent, excellent advice to all young artists and old artists that, you know, want to continue the, the art. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I think is important is, I know a lot of you know some of these artists we're talking about tonight, Van Gogh, Picasso. Um, I find it really interesting to, to, to look up artists and find new artists I haven't heard about before um, and find new inspiration. I mean, I, I don't usually like to use the word inspiration because I, I think that for me as an artist, I just kind of do my work. I really don't think of it as something that I have to be inspired to do. Although there's times that I do get inspired to do that. Um, and that's looking at artists, but also I, I kid you not, um, it's times like these when I see people, uh, young people uh, or otherwise that are finding so much joy and pride and confidence in something that they're creating in front of them on a white piece of uh, poly tab or canvas or paper or whatever it might be. So that was, that, if I wanna use the word inspiration, that's really what, when it comes down to is other, seeing other people do it, uh, whether it be professional artists or people uh, they just like to draw and paint. Um, I'd like to, uh, we, we're, we're getting, get, we're moving along just fine, but I, I, I'd like to do a little bit of the shading uh, with you guys. So if you have even just part of your skin tone uh, laid in, we'll paint it in, uh, let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, so I have a, a really light wash of the light color. I'm gonna go back to my little blue brush and I'm gonna look at, uh, let me see, I'm gonna go to the value three. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that value three. Yeah. Zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, there he is. There he is. I'll do the eyeball right there so you can see it. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that three And I'm gonna use a little bit of water. So I'm, I'm thinning that three down a little bit. And I'm gonna go back in and look for that next value. So we already laid in that dark line value, but now I'm gonna go in and see what that next darkest value is and start laying that in. Bring that in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm looking at the eyebrow. There we are, there's my actual face. And I'm laying that in over top of that dark. It's a little bit wet, a little too wet. Coming in and there's all, all this dark right in there for me, right there. And that's all dark. I'm laying in some darker darks, not to go over my dark darks. I'm just laying in over top, starting to mold that shape a little bit. And then here again, this is for Brittany Javins. There's my dark wrinkly eyebrow right there. Makes me look mad. There we go. So you can see I'm starting to lay some of it in. And if you need to, before it dries, you can also thin it out a little bit with the water to kind of give it that dimensional quality. Look at that. See, I'm just kind of thinning it out and doing washes. Washes for me are how I really get that the initial dimension in there. So I'm just laying lay the bridge. Now I'm doing those soft, I talked about this before, doing those soft shadows, right? So what I mean by soft shadows is there's no real line work. It's just value being laid in very lightly. When I say lightly, I mean the heaviness of my hand. I'm still using a dark color. I'm just adding water to it to lay in that value and come around due to the darkness of the nose. And you see this, if you look at my reference, that left side is where my lights, my light was on the other side. So I have all this dark in here. Run that in there right there, real dark. I can always go back in later and uh, add the, make it even darker. What I can't do with this particular paint is go back in and do 
a lot of lights. I can go back in with the one, but I don't have white. And again, there should not be, I don't know if I've mentioned this, this workshop, there should not be any white. You should have some sort of tone based on your color. Um, so anything that would normally be white on your face, including like the, um, the eyes, I'll actually go back in and make those the lightest one. And you can do that any time. I'm not saying to stop everything you're doing and do it now, but see, even with this one, well, she has like one little highlight that looks white on your screen, but it actually is the lightest one with a wash. So what that does for us is that we want to try to limit the contrast on the final painting. So we have a lot of whites, so it'll make too much contrast. So you can keep most of your whites or lightest lights in that white number one, that'd be great. And I'm going back in, I'm going to use a little bit of the dark dark actually and do some dark washes. And this is the thing you're doing, what we call now, it's all about pushing and pulling. You're pushing value and you're pulling, so you're pushing out the highlights, pushing down the, the darks to, to create that dimension, if that makes sense. So you're rendering. Um, we're at the stage where we're just rendering this thing out. So if I'm doing these dark darks here, I'm, again, I use a lot of water. Um, with this latex, you can get away with it. And you can create these kind of washes. You can go back over them with a little bit of light if you need to, that one. And these brushes are great to work with, but you get the idea. So there was a question in the chat about uh, wrinkles. Is this where we'd be putting those in for us more uh, experienced artists? Yeah, so the wrinkles can come in now. Again, watching how uh, you use the word contrast. So watch how much contrast you put in those wrinkles because that's one thing that can get really, that can really flatten your image. If you make your wrinkle lines dark and nothing around them but light, it makes it more uh, cartoony unless that's what you're going for. What I would do if you're doing a wrinkle is make sure that you blend out some of those darks like right here on this brow. Yeah, I have a harsh line here. I'm also going to give it some kind of a mid value and then blend that out to, oops, I made it too much, blend it out to that lightest light. And if you're using water, this is something I do all the time too. You use water, if you get a little too dark, you can just dab it out a little bit if you do it right away. So I'm doing more of a wash method and kind of building up to opaque as I go. So I'm starting out pretty transparent with washing. There's that dark, dark on the nose. And it looks kind of weird now, but when I get in there and start rendering out, it'll really have that dimension. And again, I can take my piece of paper towel, if you have one close by and dab it out a little bit, blend it out. There's a lot to be said for subtlety. Uh, even though the one thing about these is they're gonna be seen from a very far distance, but also getting that kind of those, finding your light, finding your darks, creating those shapes. Hard lines, soft lines, hard shadows, soft shadows. Soft so, shadows, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, speaking of uh, distance, our paintings are all gonna be on a mural, but do you know where a uh, cow hangs his paintings? Cow? A cow. Oh, a cow, yes. Uh, let me see. No, I don't. A museum. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I'm expecting it. <laughs> it's just that everybody's muted. Everybody's laughing. You just can't hear them. You're a great I'm inspiration. Of that. <laughs> All right. So even with my hair, what I'm going to do normally, see, this, the, the issue with this is that Normally I would lay in kind of all dark for the hair and then go back over it with some highlights, but we don't have a whole lot of highlights because our one's not really white. Although I don't have white hair, it's all dark, right? If you look close, there's some white though. Um, so I wanna make sure I have some room for that. You can go back over that with a little bit of light one, but you can start to really lay that stuff in pretty opaquely on the hair and then go back over that. So you have, you have those options. You can go in and do washes like I'm doing.
you can go opaque and kind of work yourself out of that. Um, Sorry. So you can see uh, along this bottom. One row starting with Angelica Seach. These are going to be seen from far away. So some of that definition. Is kind of important to you. Uh, the one on the far green one, the green one. Um, she chose to <laughs> the way. She, she chose to do a very flat rendering, which is fine too. It's up to you. You, you can take this as far as you want. Meaning you can render until leave it relatively simple. That's fine too. The only thing I would caution about caution you is to make sure you're not overworking your painting, which is something that I do. Um, still to this day, sometimes I kind of get myself stuck in a, a rendering. I think you may have to say that password again. I think you're buffering. Oh, okay. Am I still buffering? No. Okay. So um, when you're rendering, you can take it as far as you want. I'm, I'm maybe repeating myself, but it was kind of doing something. So under, um, for a long time, it's up to you. And again, I've shown you a couple different methods tonight. It's all a matter of how opaque you paint, finding those, those lights, those darks. You can see mine starting to take a little bit of a shape. You can, especially around the eyes is where I've worked. You're gonna see more realistic when you, when you start to see the, the beard and the hair. And again, if you have a beard, unless it's a really thick beard, you can still see some of your skin through that. So keep it relatively transparent in the, in the rendering as well. Finding those shapes, repeating myself to make sure you guys are getting that part. Uh, hard shadows, soft shadows, using that brush, not everything's harsh. A little bit of water will blend things out a little bit, bit too. That is um, generally the last bit of instruction because at this point you to the edge you you can jump we all have parachutes um and render out as long as you can stay up tonight till midnight hang out paint this thing you can go back to it tomorrow it's sometimes nice to take a break and come back uh, we're not ending right away by the way i'm just wrapping up my instruction we're going to talk a little bit at the end and give you some reminders some housekeeping and I want to see some of these if I can. Oh, I guess I was trying to go long, but I can't, can I? I just want to be sure everybody can see it. You know, I'm going to date myself. And I was even old when this was out. At this particular point in my painting, not that I look anything like this person at all in any shape, form, or fashion. I just did that, didn't I? Whoops. Um, I look a little bit kind of sort of like Vanilla Ice. I'm not sure why. Because I look nothing like him in real life, but something about what I'm doing right here with the hair, something's happening there. Vanilla Ice, Vanilla Ice like. I gotta fix that for sure. Not that he was anything wrong with that he's, he's great. I, I like that joke. That was a good one. Um, folks really have their heads down, but others are really uh, looking up. Maybe they're ready to share. Anybody? Oh, I see uh, Kayla. Is that, no, I'm sorry, Kate, Kate, Kate. Kate. Great job. Those earrings are fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it looks great, Kate. Um, I can't tell from here the value of the hair. You might want to give yourself some variation in value just to create that shape or create that dimension a little bit. But it looks great. Love it. Here, here comes Paula. 
I haven't seen Paula's at all yet. Oh, wow. Nicely done. Do you, Paula, I only have one thing if it's okay. She's talking, I think we. I would go in with a wash over the hair a little bit in some places. Just a little bit of a wash to kind of go through. Yeah, okay, I see your acknowledge. Okay, yeah, it looks great though. And this feedback I'm giving you guys, the same thing I tell Sylvia is like, I'm just trying to make it, you know, the best that you can be. Sometimes Sylvia and I fight. <laughs> Not really, kind of, sort of, we do. That's great, Paula. Thank you so much. Okay, so Anna says, after seeing Jeff's, I'm a little, okay, a lot intimidated, but I love this. Well, Anna, I, I'm going to respond to that. I know you have to remember, um, going back to what I said, I mean, we, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and it's something that I, I do as a profession, so it, it's going to be a little bit different. I try to keep it simple, too. So I hope I don't intimidate too much, and I hope that you had fun, because um, no matter – in the end, as long as it, you feel good about it, it's going to be great. And um, I'd love to see yours. I want to see these real quick. This is Amber. Okay. Oh, yeah, these from before. Okay, I got you. Now, great. Um, I don't have any feedback. It's hard to tell on the value on the blue one on, that, on the left side. It looks like you have a lot of dark value underneath that one eye, but I can't tell from the screen. Maybe it's be a shadow. Otherwise, you're golden. It looks great. There it is. Yeah, so there's a little bit of darkness under that one side. Is that maybe just a little, throw a little bit of highlight on that side? I don't know. I can't tell from your lighting source, but it, it looks great, though. Whoa. Love that. Oh. Oh, I forgot Brian was on this call. I hadn't seen him yet. Hey, nice. Oh. Love it. Perfect. Very dangerous. Oh. Okay. Brian's been hiding the whole time. I didn't realize. I, That's I, now came in. The camera. I was off in the right. wings. Thank you, though. All right, we're going to try to get to all these. Um, we're on Lynn, Lynn right now. Lynn, can I see your actual face? I forgot what it looks like. Okay, yeah, oh yeah. Um, we'll go back to your painting. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. I'm just trying to give you kind of feedback. I honestly, I don't know that I have any. Again, it's hard to see from the lighting, even in the best lighting on these videos, it's hard to tell in value. Um, you might want to make your hair just a little bit little darker, but I don't know. I can't tell really. A little bigger. Okay, too. I can I can read your little. Oh, now you're actually saying it. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. That's something I'd say. And again, you guys, I'm giving you feedback. Um, I think they're all great. I'm just giving little tidbits that can, can push them a little bit more. Uh, this is uh, great. I love the the eyelashes. I'm sorry, the eyebrows coming up over the glasses. It really gives the character. Can I see your actual face? Maybe. Oh, over here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> actual face. Okay. Actual face. And so it's really hard to do the, the buns and I think you, the hair bun, I think you really made that work for you. You gave it that, you gave it that enough uh, structure and value shift to make it look believable. Nice job. Um, can I do that again? I just got a real quick peek. Okay. Um, the other thing that really comes, strikes out on that, on the beard man, um, that those, those forehead wrinkles are really deep. You might want to wash those out a little bit with a little bit of uh, lighter value to soften those a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to go. Uh, this one's great. The little blue girl with white hair. Um, is your hair going to be darker than your skin tone? All right. Oh, there you are. Okay. That's the real you. Yeah. It looks like the real you. That's awesome. Ben and Evie and Evie go with our cameras back off if they want to. But in the meantime, we'll show um, Anna's. Anna, can you speak up just a little bit? There we go. Yes. Angelica, you there? I am. All right. I'm thinking, I like, I like Anna's a lot. I think that Anna's, oh, and Anna, you, your sidekick, he hadn't put in glasses, but we hadn't seen, we haven't seen his yet, too. I think we, we got to see both. Ah, very nice. He's so Oh, he was real quick to take it down, though. <laughs> he needs the glasses, though. I I think that the glasses could be a winner, but you know. And keep Anna and both. Sorry, um, Anna and Pete both just keep. Yeah. We we want the advice. Let us know. Work in the opacity. I don't, I don't think you should be attending. Oh, I think you may need to say that. No. <laughs> 
and, and I do look younger. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, you know, we made a decision together that we were going to paint ourselves the age we want to be. So I support that. That's awesome. Uh, is this uh, Jayla? Is that right? Jaya. Jaya, sorry. Looks great. Keep working at it. Um, your hair, can I see your actual hair? Is it long or is it short? You're going to do it long? Oh, I see. Okay. All right. And do that to darkest value. It's looking great. I love it. And when your eyelashes blend those in a little bit, but otherwise you're great. Good job. Jaya showed us hers uh, when you were out for a minute and she's been killing it all night long. She's doing a great job. On the spotlight. Already I'm the most fun part, isn't it? Yeah. I love this my hair. Get it all the Thanks. Um, I remember his actual face too. It looks pretty good. Oh, there he is. Um, you might want to make the beard and hair just a little. It's a hard again. It's hard to tell because of the screen, but you might be able to put. Push the hair down a little bit and be your darker um, if you, but it might, you might be able to push out a little bit if you wanted to. Okay, make the beard darker. See, I didn't catch that last part, I'm sorry. Oh, he asked if you said to make the beard darker? Yeah, but again, it's hard for me, so it, it might be okay. Um, is it a three or a four or a five or kind of a mixture? I don't know why. Okay, well, it's up to you. I think it looks great. I wouldn't, uh, if that's not a, a mandatory, these are all suggestions. So I think that you make your own judgment on that. I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, nice. Can you bring it up a little bit? Yeah, let that dry a little bit. And is that you? Is that you? <laughs> hey, man. Nice job. Yeah, it looks great. Let that dry a little bit. It looks like I got a little bit of runny, a little bit, but a little bit of wet paint. On. Otherwise, it looks great. You can go back and let that dry a little bit and go back over that lighter tone a little bit. It looks great. What's your name? Go, oh, okay. I can't hear. Him. Never mind. Yeah. Go ahead. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas, all right. Nice work, Thomas. I just want to make sure I give you a shout out. It was great. Megan, you're on the, you're, we can see you. Uh, I love it. I'm looking, I'm, I'm thinking about what to say. Hey, get in your room. The other thing yeah. I can this, Hi, this, this your eye. <laughs> hey. I'm still working on the ears. You could have done mine. We could have been twins a little bit there. Yeah, I love, love it. The eyebrows, you got, you captured your eyebrows. No. Really. <laughs> I thought you did. Um, Meg, I just make your, your um, pupils a little darker. That's all. Okay. This is a situation. <laughs> oh, wait. Laura? Yeah. Mm. I think nice. you need a little more blending in the middle. It's too much lightness. Yeah, and one thing you might want to do, and I'll say this for everybody, is once you finish all of your painting, you may want to go back. You may want to go back over and do more line work in the end because uh, your glasses really stand out. But what it does is you you've eliminated some of the contrast in your chin and your hairline, so you could go back and put that back in. Mm -hmm. Like, where's one that does that? Oh. So this one here, uh, let me show it this way. No, that was better this way. So yeah, like this person went back and kind of did some line work after the fact, which you can do to kind of um, bump that contrast back to yourself. This little guy here. You don't have to, it looks great, but I think maybe adding some more contrast back in could help. Yeah. 
I love those circle glasses, though. I feel like you really embodied them in absolutely all the parts of that. Thanks. If it's going to look like me, it's got to have that because, you know, I can do circles. <laughs> and circles are hard. I'm not going to lie. I took art classes for a little while, and circles were a challenge for me. So I think yours look great. Thank you. Yes. Is there, um, I know there's a, there's a whole bunch of you are, that didn't join on video tonight, and that's fine. Um, we won't call you out and make you, except for the Javens. Oh, look at there that. Look at that. Um, it's, it's, it's become dark, and we, you're now on the Witness Protection Program. Hold on. <laughs> Is it better when you're, yes. There, that works. Okay, show yours, you too. Scoot it back to you. Hi. <laughs> oh, those are those freckles, Brittany? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the first one that I've seen with uh, really predominant <laughs> freckles. That's very nice. <laughs> uh, those yeah. Are great. yeah. Uh, you, uh, Brittany, you could you could probably soften your cheeks a little bit. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Like, how much does the pencil come through? Yeah, it looks great. If the pencil comes through, that's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Question, the pencil come through. Yeah, okay. People are definitely not going to be able to get that pencil um, from the road when they look at the mural. Right. Yeah. It's, let me ask you this: before, I know we're 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 past our mark, but um, I'm happy to be on here a little bit longer if we need to be. Uh, we'll make sure if there's any questions. Um, if you have any questions at all. I don't know who this guy is either. Oh, I like it. I want to marry him. Lon Chaney. What? <laughs> My body is on. We may not want to be close. get married. <laughs> I'm on a delay out there. Ah, let me turn mine off. So um, I know that we are close to an end, but I do want to remind everybody that this video uh, will be recorded so you can go back and work at your own pace. There's nothing that says that you have to be ready or finished tonight. Um, and like Michelangelo said to the ceiling, we've got you covered. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I got. Here, here. This is... Those are some great color values in your face, I think. I'm not the resident artist, but I, I really like that. Your eyes look very emotive, very pretty. Thank you. Is this, are you, um, number one? What is it? Is your paint, is your, is your, I still didn't hear you. Did you color use, number one? Oh. I used color number one for the base, and then I think I got a little too heavy on the rest of it. No, I don't think so. I like, the other thing, I would be careful if you can see my face right here, right in here, a little hard. Hard line on here, the, maybe soften that line a little bit. Otherwise, I can't good. see your picture right now. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm doing my actual face. So right here, there's a hard line. You could probably soften a little bit. Otherwise, I okay. think that's great. Okay, thanks. Um, I also wanted to mention really briefly, again, if you know anybody that would also like to participate, follow the uh, public art of Charleston, City of Charleston page. We're doing a lot more of these, and we would love to have your friends participate as well. Drew Ross, that's bomb. Oh, no. Little Miss Ross? That's it. Yeah. Nailed it. Really? Definitely want some feedback too. Very oh, nice. Oh, she went ahead. Very nice. Um, 
the value on your nose bridge could be softened a little bit, but you don't have to, and it was great. But I'll, I would definitely take that dark value around your hairline a little bit, okay? Uh, Jaylee, is it it's Jaylee, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I also think that you could put some of those lighter colors over your braids or over your hair just because you showed us all those pretty colors in your braids. And it'd be cool for some of those colors, those different colors to come through uh, in your hair. I did that. There you go. Make it I love it. Very good job. This is the priority shot. Just so I can see. Sorry, Maria and our conferencing. Sorry. Uh, Laura, hold up there just for a second. We'll be right with you. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yep. Yeah, I had just done the hair as fast as I could. And so now it you're right, it has some darker around it so you can kind of see it. Yeah. And you guys I kind have of outlined my cheeks with it too. Yeah. Yes. And um you once this paint dries, you can always go back over it um if you wanted to make anything else darker. But I think you're you're right on it's right on. I wasn't really sure what color to do with the lips. It was weird. Just outlined them. I think it's fine. Again, we're it, the lips usually be in like a softer tone uh, or a softer uh, blend, but because you're seeing it from the interstate, that's fine to you. Oh, hey, Ben. Oh, that's Evie. Evie? Um, this sounds mine. I love it. Are you winking? Mm-hmm. That's, I think, our first wink. That one's Ben. Oh. Oh, ben. Nicely done, Ben. I do see it. Super cool, super critical. I see a couple little white spots you could cover up with the color, okay? Make sure we don't see white spots. Otherwise, amazing. Really quickly, just before we have people hop off, don't forget that the picture that you guys sent us for these are the drop off. We're picking <laughs> the drop off for your self portraits is next Tuesday, a week from today, at the Martin Luther King Center. Uh, on Donnelly Street from 5 to 7 p.m. No. Yeah. That one real quick. I'll just. Oh, here. So, um, when you come back to the King Center, if you if you were the one to drop or picked up the supplies this time, hopefully um, you won't have to park or anything like that. You can just pull right up, and we'll, we'll grab it for you. Um, please, please, please. Uh, make sure you do a couple things. Again, this is housekeeping. Obviously, make sure you're happy with it. Um, but there's a couple things I want you to put on the back of your piece, okay? Um, if you all could take a break and maybe just listen to this just for a second. We'll put this in an email, too, if we can. On the back of your piece, what I need from everybody, so you make sure we can um, credit you in the final piece. I want you to put your full name or name you go by. Um, the year, because not all of these are done in 2020. Some were done in 2019 and we'll see how things go. Um, the hometown, most of you are from Charleston, but if you have another hometown you'd like to claim, that's fine. And um, we did this mostly for the kids, but if you wanna put your age, that's fine too, you don't have to. And most of you already have the number, your color number on the back, um, because the purple's four, the green is three, uh, that, there's two blues, there's a one, and then there's a two. Four. Um, so make sure that's on there. It should already be on there. And that way we can make a list of what, whoever, everybody that participated and all that good stuff. Um, you'll get another email, I think, Maria. Yeah. yeah. And just reminding you of everything. If you have questions for us, you know how to get a hold of us. Uh, we're going to give you about 10 more minutes for questions and looking at other things. And then I think we're going to uh, wrap it up for tonight. Uh, we're going to have to jump off right away because I'd like to see some more um, pieces. If you'd like to show them off, we'd love to see them. I, I do want to just do uh, my, my last joke of the night before everybody hops off. I got one more. Good, Anna. This is something different. <laughs> it was. Okay, we're ready. So what does the artist draw before he goes to bed? He draws a bath. 
He draws the curtain. Oh, I try. I try. <laughs> that one was real close. That was a good one. That was the great guess. <laughs> Is there a? I see little pop-ups of chats. Are those questions or anything? Or good? Yeah, someone was just asking um, about drop-off. Megan Simpson says, "Great art lesson. Thanks, everyone." You guys really did great. I mean, that, I'm not just saying that. I'm so impressed. Yeah. Um, and yeah, please tell other folks, again, we need a thousand of these things. Um, and we want as many people to be involved as possible. So if you have friends, family, people that maybe lived here before and necessarily don't live in Charleston anymore, or if they're not from Charleston, that's okay. This is not limited to Charleston or West Virginia. Um, but if you, have, if you know people, you're more than welcome to pick up a kit from us. We'll give details of how you can pick up kits later, uh, additional kits rather, um, that you can send to someone, have them send it back to you and you take care of bringing it back to us. Now, we may not get into the, the, the business of um, shipping and delivering, but you know, if you want to take that on, we would love to see some of that happen as well. So uh, we're asking where others can find the information. Okay. Are you um, just on the Office of Public Art Facebook page would be the best place? Yeah, so we're going to probably do, um, we wanted to get this workshop done first so we didn't confuse folks, but we're going to do kind of a rollout of a workshop series. Um, probably this week or next, we'll release that information. And the best way to find out about Public Art in Charleston at this moment is the Facebook page. So if you haven't liked the Facebook page, it's the Office of Public Art, Charleston, West Virginia, because a lot of other cities have it. So Office of Public Art, City of Charleston, West Virginia, that'll get you there. Um, you can see other images of this process. You can see where we're doing other projects. We have a ton of projects going on right now, even in the midst of COVID. Um, so always go there. If you're not on Facebook, um, we do have from occasionally from time to time some um, things on the city page, but not not as much as we do on the, on the Facebook page. Uh, Jeff, what was that hashtag for artists that wanted to share their work from the last workshop that we did? Um, I'm glad you asked that. The mayor, I remember her doing this. It was uh, MLK CR, CR, W. MLK CRW. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's right. That is right. Yeah. I think. We would love all of our artists, uh, young, old, uh, and whatever color value that you may have ended up being, to uh, share these to really help inspire other artists to get involved. This is an incredible opportunity to see yourself represented in a really positive piece of Charleston history that's gonna be around for a long time. So things like this don't come up often. We would love to have your friends, your family, um, anybody that you know that cares about the arts or might be interested to participate. So please, if you are so inclined, uh, share that hashtag and share your work with us to help inspire other, other people. So that's the question we were talking about, having people um, that may not be Charleston anymore, if they are out of town, how can they submit? Um, so that's a great question. I heard, I saw the word digital. That's, yeah. unfortunately, we can't, we cannot do that because we want the original paintings. What, what we would do in terms of that, if you wanted to have someone you know um, participate out of town, the only way to really do that, unfortunately, is to physically get a, a kit from us and mail that to them and have them mail that back to you and you bring it back to us. I can't think of another way that's easier. Um, if you could think of another way of doing that, we, the thing we have to have is this original painting back from them. So I'm not sure if there's another way of doing that. Yeah, and the thing is, we, a lot of folks have paint laying around, but we have very specific colors and values that we want folks to use too, to make it all work in the end. So if I could think of an easier way, I'll, I'll let you know, but that's right now, all I can think of is uh, doing it, shipping it individually. And unfortunately, we haven't worked into our plan to ship things out generally. Great question though, we want as many people involved as possible. And you know, one thing I, I would love for us to do, I don't know if this is the right time, a couple people that took the last workshop made it their profile picture for like a week. And it did garner a lot of a buzz about the, the project. That's something if you guys want to do that, that would be great. I'm, 
I don't know. It seems cool. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Mural group. I love it. What a great That's the fall. Everybody else their work so far. Oh, here we go. Our line Scott goes up. It looks great. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Woo! Um, Madeline, what I love what you did there is you really have a nice balance of what we call soft in the heart. So you have these really soft shadows, shadows to create the softness around here. You have those harsh lines and harsh value under the chin to pop that out in the softness. Great job. Thank you. This has been really fun. I think it's a great job, Jim. I also really like your eyelashes. Those are <laughs> really nice. I went a little extra on that. <laughs> I was, oh, I was, I was, I was shooting my view of tonight, which is our painting and our awesome tech, um, what tech person, tech, what do you call it? Guru, guru. <laughs> I just want to go with uh, Maria Belcher. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Best of all. Angelica, thank you for uh, co-hosting and providing some uh, wonderful comic relief. Um, you know, we didn't really relieve, but you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> uh, last words, anybody? Thank you all for doing this. We love it. We want to do more. Go Charleston, go public art, go festival. <laughs> yes. I think that's the perfect way to shut up. Thank you everyone for joining us. Bye guys. Tell your friends. I have a question hey. real quick.